So um, let me start this session, um, everyone, by first introducing to you Shift Eco. Shift Eco is um, an online portal for eco-friendly products, and uh, we are an aggregated platform with products under multiple categories. And uh, under personal care, we have uh, a very important uh, product called menstrual cups. Now, menstrual cups um, is something that I myself have been very hesitant to try while I, I may be trying to make all the shifts in my, um, you know, uh, in my daily lifestyle to sort of incorporate eco-friendly products. But there is always that hitch I've had with menstrual cups. And um, so today we have with us Nadine and Nadine is the founder of uh, My Cuppies. And um, um, uh, My Cuppies is a brand um, of menstrual cups here in the UAE. And uh, we have her to answer all our questions, concerns, and uh, of course, methodologies, et cetera, on this session. So Nadine, I leave it to you uh, now to first introduce yourself and then we can take forward the session. Thank you very much. So yes, my name is Nadine Walters and I'm the founder of uh, Cuppies. And basically I'm a teacher out here in the UAE and it started actually teaching the children in school about recycling and having products that are eco-friendly. And it kind of made me reflect on my own life um, in regards to the products that I use and, you know, recycling more. So I eventually started to make the switch where I would use, you know, bamboo, bamboo toothbrushes and, you know, instead of going to the supermarket and using carrier bags, I'd carry my own bags that I can reuse all the time. So I just started to transition slowly into more sustainable products in, within my home. And one of the things that I'd never agreed with is sanitary pads and tampons. So I remember Googling, and this was a year and a half ago, Googling, are there any other safer alternatives, you know, products that are environmentally friendly. And I came across menstrual cups, which I'd never heard about. So I remember, it, remember saying it to my friends and one of them had been using it for four years. So she was able to tell me a bit about it, you know, the benefits. So, you know, I thought, why not try it? And of course there was anxieties, which we will speak about a little later on, but I converted and it was a game changer. And since then, um, I'm so passionate about eco-friendly sanitary products that I formed at Cuppies. Um, and that's how it all began. That's amazing. So for all, to give you all a little bit of context, um, every month we're using sanitary napkins and those are laced in plastic. Um, they consist of, um, unsustainably um, sourced cotton um, and a lot of brands today that are claiming to be organic and uh, compostable and biodegradable. The catch here is that they need to be going to a, 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 a facility, a recycling facility for it to be actually stripped open and you know pulled apart for certain parts to be recycled. So as much as we may say that it's absolutely biodegradable, there is a, there is a catch to um, sanitary napkins. Um, and I think um, with menstrual cups, uh, one, they're a safe alternative. I mean, if once you get used to using this, I believe that, you know, you it's absolutely leak free and you can be as comfortable as you want, mm -hmm. unlike um, sanitary pads. They're eco-friendly, of course, because um, it's a great reusable option. There is absolutely no trash that's going out in the uh, into our environment, and of course, it's absolutely and uh, extremely economical because that's just one cup that you're reusing um, for a really long time. And unlike, unlike the tampons and the sanitary napkins that we're purchasing every month and disposing it um, into the atmosphere. And that's the thing when we think about it, you yes. know, um, many pads and tampons end up in landfills and they're, you know, washed up onto our beautiful beaches, you know, and when you think about buying products every month and the packaging and the plastic and the boxes it comes with, you know, I remember doing the math and it amounts to so much waste and exactly as you said, one cup is, um, will last you up to 10 years and... Wow. The perfect is, is that it's eco-friendly, it's sustainable, you can keep on using it 
um, up to 10 years. So just one cup is versus, you know, monthly products. It's so much more friendlier to the environment. Right. So Nadine, I'm going to get to the base of it first. Could you tell us, answer a basic question? What is a menstrual cup really? So a menstrual cup is a funnel shaped um, feminine hygiene product. And the main difference is that it is inserted um, into the vagina and it is made from medical grade silicon, which I'll talk about a little bit later on. Um, so the main difference is that it's inserted and rather than absorbing fluids, it actually collects fluids, which is actually um, a lot healthier as when it is absorbed, such as um, tampons, it, abs it actually absorbs your natural bodily fluids as well. Um, and it can cause dryness. So that's the difference with a mental cup, menstrual cup is that it uh, collects the fluid rather than absorbing it. Right. And how, what are the key benefits of using a menstrual cup apart from them being extremely eco-friendly eco and economical? Yeah. So I love being able to talk about the benefits and especially, you know, using the cup for the past year and a half. Um, one of the things is that it's affordable. Now, I know that the sanitary products over here are quite expensive. So when I would go to the UK, I would always come back with a suitcase full of pads and tampons, um, you know, because it was so much cheaper in the UK. So yeah. it's affordable as one cup will last you um, up to 10 years. OK, so that's the biggest kind of benefit is yeah. no more dashes to the shops, buying your monthly products, just one cup. And it can last you if you look after it a very long time. Um, one of the things that I love about it is that it holds up to three times as much as tampons do. Um, and that then allows you to be able to sleep in it, to get on with your day-to-day -day activities without having to frequently go to the toilets. And what I love about that, especially being at work for eight hours, nine hours, you know, I can keep that cup in and not have to worry about changing it every two, every three, every four hours, you know, so because it holds so much, um, you, you just can get on with your day-to-day -day activities with ease. Um, what a lot of ladies don't know is that pads and tampons actually include toxins, you know, chemicals, plastics, even pesticides. So with the menstrual cup, they're made from uh, medical grade silicon, which is harmless. It doesn't have any chemicals, no plastics, and it's really safe to insert um, into your vagina. So that's one of the things that I love about it is that no chemicals, you know, toxins or plastics are involved. Um, it's healthier as well for your body. Um, I find, you know, using tampons, you know, it can cause irritation, sometimes dryness. But what's great with the cups is that even on your light days or when you think you're about to begin your period, you know, you can insert the cup and it won't cause that irritation, that dryness, as you you know, it would do with a tampon. Um, right. So whether you're light or heavy, um, it works very well. So there's, you know, there's many benefits, you know, as we said, with the eco-friendly and it being sustainable as well. That actually sounds super amazing. And I'm <laughs> considering why, why haven't I made this shift myself yet? Yeah. <laughs> but having said that, um, uh, Nadine, if somebody is going out to sort of buy their first menstrual cup, what must they look out for while making uh, the choice? So the main thing I would look out for is making sure that the material is made from 100% medical grade silicon. Now, there are a lot of companies out there that are selling um, menstrual cups that are not licensed. So it's really important to see those words that it's made from medical grade silicon, which will indicate that um, they have all the approvals and you know no plastics or chemicals have been used in there. Now, you know, when you go to different brands and the same as cuppies, um, sizing always pops up. And it's not as easy as if you're buying, you know, clothes or trainers and you know your size, you know. Um, but usually it is linked to um, your age and if you've given birth um, naturally or verse if you haven't. So yeah. you will go on different websites, uh, different brands, and usually there will be a guide that will ask you your age, ask you if you've given birth naturally, um, sometimes it can come into effect your flow of your period, but right. nine times out of 10, it's more linked to your age. Um, and if you've given birth and naturally many companies and us here at Cuppies, we have two sizes and it's linked to your age. And if you have or not given birth as well. So it is 
a tricky one, but um, normally size one or size two um, will guide you the best as to what size cup you should get. Right. And what is the process of using these cups? I mean, from when you receive the package, um, do you need to sterilize them before you use them? Or um, um, how, how do you go about the entire process of... From so if you purchase a cup is, um, and you, you know, you're about to start your period, the first thing that is recommended is to boil the cup for two to five minutes, and that will um, cleanse it and get rid of any bacteria. So the first thing is always boil it. And then before inserting it, you want to be washing your hands thoroughly. It's really important that your hands are clean and that your hands are dry before inserting it. Now, this is one of kind of the common questions of how do I insert it? And then, um, you know, if you go on the website and, you know, you'll be able to go and find some information and shift eco. Um, the main thing is to get into a comfortable position. So just as if you were to use a tampon, you may want to sit, you may want to stand or squat, anything that you feel comfortable with. Um, and there are many folding techniques. Now I can't say, you know, which technique is the best for every woman. Um, there's lots of information out there. There's a C fold, there's a punch fold. And what I recommend is just trialing with different folding techniques and seeing, you know, which one works for you. So definitely get in a position that's comfortable and choose a folding technique that works for you. And what you then want to do is insert it. And what will happen is as you insert it, the cup will kind of spring open and create a airtight seal. Now, again, there's many questions of what happens if it's not inserted properly or how do I know? So basically you can feel around the edge and if there's any kind of ridges, um, it's an indication that it's not opened up properly. So one of the techniques to do is just get the stem, give it a twist, and that will allow the cup to open up um, fully inside. And you can almost hear the pop. And I don't want that to be off-putting. It doesn't hurt or anything like that. But that's usually a sign that it's, it's opened up properly. And if the seal has been created, it is leak-free. You know, you will never, ever leak. So during your period, when you insert it and remove it, um, again, just wash it. Um, some women use wipes. Some using, women use just warm water. Um, and then to dry it and then just reinsert it. Um, one of the issues as well is that women worry about how to take it out. Now, yeah. I was to coming take to that. Out, <laughs> yeah, it's, that's one of the biggest worries. Um, it's not as hard as you think <laughs> when you get used to it. But um, what you need to do is break that seal. So about what I like about cup is, is that it comes with a stem. And some menstrual cups come with a ring, some cups come with a short stem, but I like the stem, especially for beginners, it allows you to cut it down to what you feel is more comfortable. So when you are removing it, you want to try and locate the stem. And when you locate the stem, you literally have a pinch and you pinch it, uh, which breaks a seal. And there's holes at the top of it, which allow air to get into it. So you just literally pinch it in and then it will open up the seal. And then you just take it out um, as easy as that. <laughs> so while, while you're taking it out, is there a, a possible chance of it spilling over or is it um, you know, you have to be really careful? Yeah, there's a possibility that it might spill for your first time. And it does take a couple of cycles to get used to, you know, it's some uh, women get it straight away. Um, sometimes it can take a couple of cycles, but um, when you get the technique, it shouldn't be messy at all. Um, you know what I mean? It's not gonna be something that you're really dreading. It should be fine just to take it out and then empty the contents. But again, it comes with practice. Right, and uh, post that, I mean, once you're done with your period entirely, how do you store it? What do you, again, do you go back to boiling it again? And then- Yes, so it kind of um, mirrors the start of your period. So at the end of your period, you will boil it again for two to five minutes in the hot water, uh, boiling water. And then with cuppies, we provide a organic pouch that you can store it in. But you know, right. other brands uh, sometimes don't provide that. So you'd have to find something else for you to store that in. But we definitely recommend to sterilize it as again, that gets rid of the bacteria and the buildup. And that's what keeps it being able to use for so long and 
you know, without it discoloring. So definitely the most important is ensuring you boil it at the end of your period and then um, store it ready for your, you know, your next cycle. Right. And Nadine, if we're as a, at an average, if we're using, say, a menstrual pad for about three to four hours, mm-hmm. how do you compare it to the cup? Um, how many hours uh, do you think that it's safe to sort of keep in? So you can use a menstrual cup for up to 12 hours, which is great, you know, compared to a tampon or a pad that you're changing every two hours, frequent trips to the toilet. Now, if you're light, um, you could leave it up to 12 hours. And I wouldn't recommend leaving it any any time past 12 hours. But if you're heavy, and it just depends on your flow, even if you're heavy, you could leave it up to eight hours. Um, You should never find that it's going to overspill. And that's another worry from women that it's, you know, it's going to get so full that it's going to, but it will never get to that point. You know, knowing your body, if you're heavy, then I'd say change it, you know, within eight hours, you know, more frequently if you're light. But the great thing about it is um, you can keep it in for up to 12 hours, depending, you know, if you're light, medium. And cuppies actually have markings on there, which is great. And you get to know your body. You know, you get to know what you're like, how much fluid you lose, you know, on a lighter day or how much fluid you lose on a heavier day. And it feels like the fluid you lose during those five to seven days is an awful lot. But when you do the research, it's, it's um I think they said up to 80 mils I can't remember but it's um it's not a lot at all and that's what I love about the markings with cuppies is you get to know your body and what you're like heavy v light as well so up to 12 hours so it's it's great right and and what about the hygiene around it if I'm keep I mean if we're keeping something um you know that is um, inside for that long mm. and provided that you know we're um, um, leaking a lot of blood is it absolutely safe and hygienic um, internally yes definitely as i said uh, it's safe because it's made from medical grade silicon 100% um like i said no chemicals toxins plastics uh, bpa nothing that is bad for your body is in there so it's very safe to insert it and have it in your body what's great about the the silicon is that medical grade allows it to be used and used again. And that's why it's so sustainable. That's why it can last so long. And what's great with that um, material as well, it's kind of odorless. So, you know, sometimes you get a bit of odor with using tampons and pads, but it, you know, it it doesn't create a lot of odor as well. And it is very hygienic. Um, I know a lot of women worry about, you know, when you're out, what would you do? Yeah, you know, when you're out and about. And that's, again, another common question. But because you can keep it in for so long, the reviews that I've had and sending out surveys, it's very likely that you actually attend to your menstrual cup while you're out. You know, some women will change their cup before they go out. Um, Even at work as well, you know, I work eight hours and I can keep the cup in, you know, on my lighter days um, and also heavy days for a long period of time. So it's most likely that you won't even attend to your cup when you're out. But if you are, we're lucky here in the UAE and other countries, as we have the bidets that we can use in the toilets and we can use that, you know, to help clean it. So what I would recommend is if you're out, before you go to the toilets, you can get a paper towel and just wet it, or you can just use tissue inside the toilets, remove it, and you can just empty the cup and wipe it down. Um, if you have a bidet, you can use that and dry it and then just reinsert it. And one, when you get home, just clean it properly. So some women do carry wipes with them and they can use the wipes. But I just use tissue um, that's slightly wet before I go in there, wipe the outside, <laughs> empty the contents and just wipe it and dry it and then reinsert it. Um, and when you get home, clean it properly. But you'll find that when you do go out, you you rarely will attend to it because you can keep it in for, you know, much longer compared to a tampon. Mm-hmm. And uh, another question I received from somebody who was looking forward to the session was, yeah. um, when you have a sudden surge, will the cup be able to retain um, all the blood? But I guess you answered that already and I'd just ask you to sort of... Um, yeah, just no, I can I can say if you have that sudden surge, it's, you know, it will be able to hold the blood. It's not going to suddenly fall out. So that right. airtight seal um, 
is fine. It, it, it won't create any issues. The only way that it will fall out is if you remove it and you break the seal. So I can promise if there's any sudden surges, um, your cup is safe, it will stay in place. And even if it is heavy with fluid, um, it will not, um, it won't ever just fall out and you know, you'll be in an awkward situation, it will be fine. <laughs> and that's as long as obviously you um, ensure that the seal right. is properly suctioned on, there'll be no issues. It's very safe. And what about sleeping positions, sitting positions? I mean, I, I, I believe that with menstrual cups, you don't need to worry. You can just be absolutely carefree. Is that true? Yes, it's very true. Um, and again, it links to me with my reviews. A lot of ladies said it's so great to sleep in a menstrual cup. As sometimes when women are on a heavy period, you know, with pads and tampons, they're just so scared that they're going to leak and they don't really fully sleep properly. They're, they're just so concerned. But with a menstrual cup, again, linking it into it being comfortable, not only comfortable, but just being able to stay in longer than a tampon and holding more fluid than a tampon, it allows you to be able to sleep, you know, carefree. Right. And also as well with the activities, you know, you can sleep in any position, you can do yoga, you can, you know, go swimming without worrying that anything's going to happen. You can do Zumba, you can do anything you want and just get on with your day-to-day -day activities feeling comfortable. You know, there's there's nothing that you would do that would affect the, the menstrual cup inside. It's, you know, you can just get on and feel comfortable and enjoy. That sounds amazing again. Good, good. <laughs> so coming to another myth that a lot of, there's a lot of talk about, um, you know, if I'm a virgin, will it become comfortable enough to insert? Yeah. Um, what is um, your take on that? Um, again, um, you know, sometimes, especially with uh, different cultures as well, this is something that's more, you know, on the top of their mind as well, depending on your culture. But it's safe for if you're a virgin and also if you're a teenager as well. Um, so if you're a virgin, it doesn't affect your virginity in any way. Right. But some brands will do extra small cups. Um, right. And that would be obviously a lot smaller and easier to insert. Now, I've actually had um, a teenager, for example, um, and I spoke to the mom and she was a virgin and she actually brought uh, cup one from Cuppies and her reviews were great. There was no issues whatsoever. So if you are a teenager, I would recommend just speaking to your parents about it. And if you are a virgin, if you're just comfortable with your body, comfortable with your periods, there's no reason why you can't use a menstrual cup. It doesn't affect your virginity um, and it shouldn't hurt when you insert it. But I would recommend maybe going for an extra small, which are you know a lot smaller than size one and two, and that will be a lot more comfortable for your first time as well. Right. And uh, another question, um, you know, that a lot of people ask, what if I'm not able to pull it out? Yeah, so again, another, scare for women um so what a lot of women don't know is that actually the menstrual cup sits a lot lower than a tampon a right. lot lower you know a tampon you insert fully up um whereas a menstrual cup you insert it and then as soon as it creates a seal you know it sits a lot lower than your cervix now right. there have been issues when i've had you know messages you know i can't remove the cup so if you have a high cervix, sometimes when you insert the cup, it can move up slightly, okay? And it's not to panic. It's still not as high as what a tampon would be. But what I recommend is again, just getting into that comfortable position um, and just using your stomach muscles. So whether it's traveled up slightly higher and you can't reach it, or whether you're just removing it, just bear down a little bit with your stomach muscles and that will ease it um, you can find the stem and then from the stem you can locate the base of the cup where you just pinch it and remove it so um, one thing it will never get lost it will never ever get lost which is another worry um, you know I mean the only way that you won't be able to remove it is if it's just you know traveled up very slightly but again just relax don't panic squeeze down and then you should be able to get the stem and that's why the stem is quite important, especially for beginners when they're getting used to it and not cutting it fully off because um, the stem helps you to locate the base of the cup. Um, and for example, 
I cut half of my stem off. I never completely cut it all off, but with practice, it, it becomes second nature. Right. And um, can you swim with it? Yes, swimming is totally fine, um, along with all activities. So as long as when you insert it and the seal has been created, um, you know, it's sprung open correctly, it will be, there'll be no issues. And wow. you don't have to panic, you know, like as if you wore a, a tampon and, you know, the string is visible to others. You know, you don't have that issue with the menstrual cup. Even if you don't cut, cut all of the stem off, it will never be visible. It's never, it's not like the tampon string. So, um, yeah, it's totally fine to swim as long as that seal um, has been fully created. It's it's very safe. And that's just what I love about it is just feeling comfortable to exercise and swim or, you know, do whatever you, I may want to do and, and just feeling that comfort, knowing that, you know, it's fine. Right. And uh, what about the silicone that uh, um, it's made of? Is it recyclable? Yes, the great thing about it, it is recyclable. So, um, you know, whenever it may be that you want to maybe change your menstrual cup or get rid of the one you're using, you can chop it up and add it to your garden, your soil or planted pots. Um, some women choose to burn it, <laughs> but no chemicals are used. So it creates no bad fumes or anything that you can, you know, nothing bad, but also um, you can just throw it in the bin. Um, it's recyclable and it won't cause harm to the environment. So it's, it's great. Right. Another question for you, Nadine, and uh, I'm sorry I'm shooting out a lot of questions, <laughs> okay. but uh, I, there Beautiful. is so much talk about menstrual cups and so many key concerns. <laughs> Can it be used in place of maternity pads? So what I recommend in doing the research um, is not to use it um, just after you've had a baby and you want it for bleeding because your body needs to heal and repair. Okay. So naturally I would say not to use it straight away. But what I would recommend is when you have your postnatal um, appointment, which is usually like six weeks, roughly after giving birth, just to speak to your doctor for approval. So I don't like to say yes, it's definitely one of those where you shouldn't use it straight away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, let your body repair and then you can use it after you've had approval. So I have a friend actually back in the UK um, that had a baby and she used it after seven weeks um, of giving birth and she checked and it was totally fine. So it's one of those where I wouldn't use it straight away, just wait, you know, let your body repair. And right. then once you have another, another doctor's appointment or, you know, just speak to the doctor about it and I'm mm -hmm. sure he will, he will give approval that it's okay to use. Lovely. Okay, so that comes to my last question for you, Nadine. Mm -hmm. Tips for anyone, um, any sort of uh, tricks that you want to, you know, sort of tell people or maybe just, mm -hmm. in, you know, a little bit of inspiration there. What are you going to say to all the people who are thinking of trying <laughs> them? They always had that little concern in their yeah. minds of um, giving this a shot. There's a couple of things that springs to mind and what I always say to my friends when I first you know, introduce them to menstrual cups is transition slowly into it. Don't just change it straight away, use menstrual cups. So what a lot of women do is when they know they're at home for an hour or two hours, they will use a menstrual cup while at home. Um, some women choose to use it for the first time with still wearing a pad, just in case they don't create the seal properly. So I definitely recommend, you know, don't just go straight into it, just transition slowly into it, using it at home and then get more confident and then maybe use it by going out for an hour and just, you know, slowly go into it. Um, another tip is when you first take, remove the menstrual cup out, do it in the shower. So that was my biggest fear of removing it and it just being messy. And actually I got it straight away, but I did go in the shower and I did remove it just to see what it was like for the first time. Um, and that's something that helped me and something that, you know, I recommend to other first time users is just don't rush it, just slow down. Um, and again, just persevering, you know, they're, they're very small cups. Um, you know, they're not as big as what people think. And some women get it straight away. Some women, it takes a couple of periods to get used to, but I would definitely recommend just sticking with it and trying it. And then before you know it, I promise you, it will be a game changer. <laughs> and it will become second nature, inserting it, removing it, it would just be easy. And 
I always think back to tampons and when I first used a tampon um it just went all wrong and it kind of scared me off forever <laughs> but then now it's so normal you know when I used to use them it's it becomes second nature so again it's just a matter of not giving up and um you know you will be a cup converter I promise you it will be it will be great but definitely just persevere and just continue to use it and get used to it but it's safe hygienic affordable and it's just you know a lot healthy for you and friendly for the environment that's amazing Nareen I think I must you've convinced me in this session to <laughs> go for it and make the switch and I'm definitely going to give it a shot because um, I think I've realized that it is a matter of just a little bit of change in format and um, yeah, yeah. Um, just overcoming that for a couple of months actually yeah. then you're comfortable for life and you're yeah. saving so much waste um, yeah. you know that we create within the environment like I mean as an individual if you're using four sanitary napkins uh, in a day and that's multiplied into five yeah. days yeah. in a month which is about you know 20 sanitary napkins and if you convert that into a year that's a a crazy exactly. amount yeah. if you think yeah. of it of a lifetime it's thousand plus sanitary napkins that we're using yeah. and throwing it into the environment um mm. so yeah i think this is a, a great shift to sort of make and um it is absolutely um extremely impactful and it and i, I and i think it's going to be easy once one has gotten the hang of it so yeah and um, um, unfortunately I don't have any questions from you uh, for you sorry from um, anybody attending this session <laughs> but I'm definitely um, going to you know sort of post this session online um, yeah. and if I receive any questions any concerns I'm definitely going to direct those towards you. Uh, no problem hopefully there'll be a few questions uh, I'm sure but um, no, thank you very much for having me. Um, thank you so much. Hopefully no. one of the days the live session on Instagram will work. No technical issues. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully we'll work Thank that out. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for your time, Nadine. This, you. this was great, super enlightening, and um, I'm definitely trying it. So hopefully Thank a lot of others will get inspired as well. I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you bye so bye. much, Nadine. Bye-bye.